Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will be talking about yet another form of user authentication in backend list that we call guest login. Uh, another word for it is also anonymous login. Let me describe a scenario to put things in perspective. Suppose you are on an e-commerce shopping site and you put some items in the, in the shopping cart, you go all the way to checkout, you can actually buy items and on some sites and in some shopping applications, either during the checkout or after the checkout, the app asks you if you want to create an account. And if you do create an account, then whatever you purchased is already in your purchase history. So you have gone through the whole experience of adding items to the, to the card, uh, uh, doing the checkout, and then once an account is created, it is automatically linked with your purchase history. So for instance, here I'm on the Best Buy site and I added uh, a TV into the shopping cart and I'm not logged in. So when I go to checkout, one of the options that they offer for new customers is to continue as guest. And when you do so, there is no information about the user. Yes, you put the shipping address and so on, but there's really no actual account that represents this user. And this is just one of the examples where anonymous login is used. There are others. So in other words, whenever you want to capture uh, information from the user, store something in the database, but you don't want to uh, get the user to create an account until or unless they want to. And that's exactly the uh, scenario where guest login API provided by Backendless comes into play and it makes it very, very easy to use this functionality. Uh, to demonstrate how it works, I put together a little uh, application that is built with UI Builder. It can be built with any uh, technology using our SDKs. The guest login API is available in all our SDKs. Thus, uh, you can take advantage of this functionality really in any kind of application or even uh, if you use REST API and uh, without our SDK, it is still possible. With UI Builder, it makes it so much easier to, uh, for me to demonstrate how it actually works. Let me show you an implementation and then I will explain where that API is used. And I will also demonstrate what's going on in the databases. I will be storing information and then I will also demonstrate what that user record looks like whenever a guest account is created. Let me switch to the front end section. And here I put together a little page that is called guest login. Let me run it first and then uh, I will, we will walk through specific implementation details. So here, whenever this page starts, it, this is a very primitive kind of a to do, not so much management, but uh, a page that where you can type in various to do items and it just associates with the user. So at this point, I'm not logged in. There is no information about me as a user that is presented to the page. And let me start adding some uh, to do items, for instance, shopping and uh, let's say uh, workout, cleaning. So now I have three items. And in here, this is a list of my items. So that's what's going on in my application at this point. And notice that I haven't logged in yet. In fact, if I were to completely close the browser page, so right now I'm not logged in, I haven't provided any authentication information, and I close the browser and just rerun this page, notice that the information about my to-do items uh, is still there. So as if the application knows where I left off. And uh, this is for a very good reason. Let's take a look at what's going on in the user's table in Backendless from the user management perspective. I'm going to switch back to Backendless and go to Backend. And notice that right here in the users table, there is actually a user account. And in the user status, remember we talked about the user status column, the, uh, the value is guest. And uh, here the name and email are just some random numbers to identify that account. So this record right here identifies my session with that application and it is in the database and there is a column here called to do's and I know we haven't really discussed database and the database the backendless database is covered in a completely separate course but here we will be touching on that just to demonstrate what's going on in the app so here this is a relationship column meaning that my user record has relation to some other 
uh, records in the database. Specifically, there are three objects, and the reason there are three objects is because there are three to-do items. For each uh, to-do item here, there is a separate object in the database. And if I click on this relations for that specific anonymous user, I'm going to get uh, these three records in a table called to-do. So these tasks, these to-do items are actually hardwired now at the database level to my anonymous user account. And likewise, uh, if your database schema is complex and it has more and richer relations, you can treat that database record as if it is a regular user. You can associate it with anything that is going on in your application without asking the user to do the formal registration. And uh, at some point, uh, just like in that Best Buy example, when we get to the checkout, we can register or even after the checkout. In here, I have the register link. And then what the register link does, it will actually create a user record. And not only that, it will take that user uh, account that is created in Backendless and sort of upgrade it to a regular user record. So in here, this is just random stuff. But if I go to register and I register myself with my email address, my name and the password, when I click register, now it does say, hello, Mark. So the application knows who I am and I get the same to do items. Let's take a look at what happened in the database. So in the database, it is no longer that random uh, identifiers. Now it has my email and it has my name. So whenever I did registration, part of the registration API is to sort of upgrade that guest account into a full-blown backendless account. The user status is enabled and in the uh, social account it is backendless. So this is, it tells me that this is just a regular backendless account. This is guest API in action. And I can continue uh, adding items. So for instance, study codeless, click save. And now study codeless is a part of this relation. So here in, uh, in the database, there are going to, there are four objects linked to that account. And here it is study codeless. So completely seamless application continues to work, but rather than working with a guest account, it works with a regular account. From the representation, object representation perspective in the application, whenever you register a user, whenever you log in, you get a backendless user object. And whatever columns are in the user's table, they become the properties of that user object in your application. Whether you use guest login or regular login, what happens is the backendless user object is going to be exactly, will have exactly the same structure. Whenever it's guest login, you can identify that it is a guest and not a, re not a regular user. And then there are, and you can do that really just by looking at the user status. So let's take a look at the implementation of that uh, app, of that uh, tr primitive to-do app, just to point out some things that uh, are done in the, in the app to take advantage of the guest login functionality. First of all, when this application starts, uh, this is the logic that is going on. The, the most important part that I wanted to point out is this block, login as guest user. And then this is the block that essentially creates this phantom user record, uh, the one that is anonymous, that one doesn't have any uh, identity, essentially. It's just uh, some user session. And then just like with other login forms, there is stay logged in, meaning that once I start using the, uh, the page and I, if I'm not registered, if I'm not logged in and I'm still just a guest user, whatever information that I put in the application and store in the database is associated with that user. If I shut down this page and <clears throat> restart it, then all of that information, that user record will still be there, which means using this functionality, you can, uh, let's say, to, uh, to look at it from the perspective of e-commerce sites. Using this functionality, you could have a user who added items to the shopping cart. You can actually save the shopping cart in the database, link it to that user account. They can shut down the app or close the browser. When they go back in, 
if stay logged in is true, you will still be operating with the same phantom user record. This one is essentially just loads the, uh, the data from the database to display what the items are. Notice that when application starts, the very first thing that I do is this if statement and I check if the get, get current user, which is another API, we haven't really talked about it, but this is a good opportunity. So I get the current user and the get current user will return that user object if stay logged in was true. So if there is no current user, meaning that it is equals that it equals null, then I do the login uh, as guest. If there is current user, that means that it's, it was there from the previous session, then I lo load data from the, uh, from the database to get the to-do items. So this is how initiation of the entire guest login works. Okay. Now, going back here, uh, the actual conversion of a regular user to a registered user happens, it is going to be on the registration page. So in on this page that I called register, this is my registration form. And in here, I adapted this form from the login form, and I modified the logic a little bit to actually do user registration. So all the logic here will happen in here, there is going to be a lot. But the core of this is going to be right here in this register function. So check this out. So first of all, I check if there is a current user, if there is no current user, I just r register a regular user. If there is a current user, meaning there is a logged in uh, guest user, then this will happen and register user. Uh, we already talked about this API. The difference here is I'm also passing object ID of the currently logged in guest user. And then what happens as a result of passing this object ID is the current phantom uh, anonymous user gets upgraded to the user that I'm registering. As a result, that user record that I had in there where I was completely anonymous in the database and when it became Mark with my email address, then all the relationships that I established in the database, they sort of uh, convert. They don't really convert. My record converts to a regular user. And then for the simplicity's sake, I immediately log in myself because I already know email and password. And that's, that's what happens. So everything else is just some additional kind of record keeping and making sure that we handle errors and so on. But there are two things to, to, to remember for the guest login functionality. Number one is the actual uh, uh, call to log in as guest. And that is... Uh, uh, done on this page, just to review, right here, login as guest, that creates this record, and it establishes the user in the application. If stay logged in is true, that uh, information about that logged in guest will survive the actual runtime of that app or that session in the browser. When I restart, it will still be there. And second is passing object ID in the register user API to upgrade anonymous user to a full-blown registered user. It's very simple. Uh, but the, the power of this is phenomenal because you can really provide uh, an upgraded user experience to the users of your application with this functionality. That's all I have prepared for the guest user login. Thank you for watching, and as always, happy Cutlass coding.